go away for three weeks to America. So I'm visiting there from Australia and I'm going to be visiting a bunch of other YouTubers and aquarium places. That's what my whole trip is going to be about. So I'm very excited. However, I have two huge six foot fish tanks full of fish that I need to make sure are fine while I'm gone. A lot of the time there'll be either an aquarium maintenance person in your area or you can ask your local aquarium stores as well about services that they offer. And you can pay someone to come over and look after your tanks and do water changes if it's a long trip and you don't have anyone in your family who's a fish person who you can trust to do that. I'm getting Emily from Gem Aquatics to come over. In this video I'll introduce her and we're gonna have a little bit of a talk to her about some of the tips that she has for when you leave your aquarium since this is her job. She knows a lot about the mistakes that people make and can give us some tips hopefully as well. Make sure that you follow me on Katie Cichlids and that's on Instagram. Make sure that you check out my YouTube for some shorts and stuff that I'll be uploading as well because I'm gonna upload a bunch of content while I'm over there and hopefully it'll be really enjoyable for you. Oh, hey. hey <laughs> Fancy seeing you here. Pretty cool. <laughs> Where to start? We were having a bit of a talk of what we thought would be most helpful. Maybe we could start with just talking about some of the common mistakes that people make. So we'll go through the top three things that most people do before they go away. The first one's kind of a two in one, so it has to do with your feeding and your water quality. All three of these kind of have to do with your feeding because food, like anything, any rotting matter will create ammonia, which can bind to your fish's gills and stop them from uptaking oxygen, which can be detrimental to those guys. And unfortunately, you don't want to come back to a tank full of dead fish after a nice relaxing holiday. No. Um, so whatever you can do to reduce the ammonia and trust your water quality, it's definitely the way to go. First one is water changes before you go and over or under feeding. So with your fish in general anyway, you always want to slightly underfeed. That way you're not going to have health issues. Your fish aren't going to be obese. You're not going to have excess waste in the tank creating that ammonia and you're not going to have to do 20 water changes a week to keep on top of it. Mm -hmm. um, so always underfeed a little bit before you go away so they're still fed. Fish can go two weeks without food so it's not a big deal if they don't get food for a couple of days. Um, but yeah, so underfeed and do a big water change before you get back. That way you're bringing that ammonia down and stabilizing your water parameters. So if there does happen to be a little bit of food that's uneaten, that little bit of ammonia isn't going to cause a problem and your tank will come back from it. Also as well, make sure as soon as you get back, you do another big water change because if anything mm -hmm. has built up in that time, you will bring it back down. Mm -hmm. Or you can get someone like me to come over and do yeah. it while you're not there. Same mindset as what all your wholesalers and fish breeders have as well. They never ship a fish that's oh, been fed the day before. True. That way yes. in the bag, the ammonia doesn't build up mm -hmm. and you're not going to have a dead fish on arrival. The mm -hmm. second thing is your feeder blocks. So all those little chalk oh. white blocks like five day feeders, yes. seven day feeders, 14 day feeders. Um, there are certain ones you can get like automatic feeders where you put the food in yourself and time it. They're mm -hmm. great, much more reliable. Little tip with those guys is always run on before you go. That way you can see if there are any malfunctions, if it isn't dosing at the right time, if it's adding too much. Um, and you can fine tune that and make little tweaks to that before you go away mm -hmm. and leave it to run your tank. So I've got an automatic feeder. It's a little jewel automatic feeder. Perfect. And so, yeah, you just fill it up, pop it on top of here. That'll last them around five days normally. It's gonna always depend on your fish too. Like these guys, I find that they tend to get aggressive if you don't feed them. Yeah, absolutely. So they, they, like, <laughs> they like to be fed, um, whereas other fish like guppies, rainbow yep. fish, ones that are a little bit more peaceful, they're probably not gonna have as many aggression problems yeah. if you're not feeding and them. And also the smaller guys, they obviously have a smaller metabolism and smaller body weight so if they pick a little bit of algae or like scuds or something that naturally occurs in the tank that's usually enough to get them through but with the food pyramids try and stay away from those guys because they are majority plaster of Paris. Mm -hmm. It generally doesn't cause too many issues apart from the ammonia effect and also it is plaster of Paris so it can also alter your pH if it's a tiny tank. Mm -hmm. Say like a 10 gram block in a 40 litre tank, you're probably going to have a pH change by the time you get back. Mm -hmm. And if it is too drastic, then unfortunately your fish probably won't be able to cope with the big differences that it's made. Mm -hmm. And again, don't want to come back to a tank full of dead fish when you come home. And then the third thing is just explaining everything properly to either the pet sitter that you've hired or to mm -hmm. whoever look, is looking after your tank. It's mm -hmm. the best way to avoid problems and miscommunications. That way they're clear and familiar with what your processes are. Your mm -hmm. animals are getting the same routines as they always do, which is great for them because they don't know that you're going away, they don't know what's no. happening. Yeah, so. that's a good point. I didn't even think about routine. Basically what we do, well, what I do anyway, is we come in and we start from morning to afternoon. We go through everything that you do during the day, what time you feed, what time you turn lights on, lights off, mm -hmm. if you do anything special, um, if it's for normal like land animals, if you take them for walks, all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, basically just go through your day and make sure the routines stay the same as what you usually do. Which reminds me too, that was one thing that we did with the lights. If you've got wireless Bluetooth ones, that's really convenient, but what can happen is if you 
need to reset them. You need to be able to get back into the account. Otherwise, you can't properly recalibrate them and everything. Yeah, I think you would probably have to make a new account and yeah. like sync them all up onto it. So if you're going away, it's good to give whoever's minding the tanks your login details for your app as well, um, for your wireless lights. Now, what about the things that are the most helpful? I guess we've kind of gone through those at the same yeah, time. Yeah, so there are a mistakes. couple of other things. Um, so a good trick, especially if it's someone that's not familiar with fish, like me, myself, I've had fish for many years, so I can eyeball and I know what kinds of food to feed and how much to feed. But if it's someone that's completely new mm. either to the hobby or just new to tanks in general and they don't know what they're doing, let's say it's your mum, dad, brother or sister yes. or other family member, you can get the seven day pool containers, you can get AM and PM ones and that way you can schedule out for each morning or afternoon however much you feed and exactly what you feed. That way there's no possible way of overfeeding, underfeeding, mixing the foods up and you can trust that your fish are getting what they need. If you didn't have something like that, I've got like little tablespoon type things too. So like little cup things like this. So you could also write down for someone, you know, two of these in the morning and two of these at night, for example, yeah. um, if you didn't have like little <coughs> pill things. But yeah, I definitely think, especially for non-fish people, you need to be so specific about yeah. how much to feed the fish. Yeah. Because some people go way overboard. Especially like with new fish people, you come in and the whole bottom of the tank is covered and within 24 hours, if they don't do a water change on that, it's going to be an ammonia yes. spike and you're going to lose your fish. Another good thing is if you can um, leave a little Word document just printed out just with the basic overlay. I personally write everything down in my notes when we do our walkthroughs, so I have a copy of everything, but some people, like if it, again, if it's a family member, it's sometimes nice just to be able to refer to the Word document instead of having to contact you, especially if you've gone mm. overseas or something like that, where you're unable to be contacted. Um, that way, if anything goes wrong, they can refer to the Word document and they know how to handle the situation. The other thing too that's probably good to do is I'm going to write down, or like use a little label printer, yeah. and I'm going to put on the, like all of the things in the cabinet and everything, like what they are, yeah. so then you know yeah, what everything is. Of having, like, at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world. Like, we can always trail it back and find what's what, but just the peace of mind mm -hmm. for yourself so you know that the wrong things aren't being unplugged, especially if it's like you were saying before, the lights, if they can become unsynced. So that way we stay away from the things that don't need to be touched and can yes. easily access the ones that do. Yes, and also it's good just mentioning too, if you've got like little odd things that you do. So I'm really bad with cable management. With my AI Prime lights, I don't touch this lump of cables because these lights are a bit sensitive. Sometimes like if you knock them, they come undone and then you've got to reset the Bluetooth. So just little things like that. That's why it was actually really helpful having you come over and us actually do the water changes because I could think of all these things yeah, that I would never exactly. have thought of if I was just using my brain to yeah. like think about the process. We also realized that this thermometer is broken because <laughs> it said 28 degrees and then the other one that's more reliable said uh, 23 degrees yeah. so just little things like that. Yeah. I do know that my fish, if they really, really want to, they can jump out on the sides there. Now that they're bigger, they don't really do that. In the nighttime, because you're staying here, if you come down and their lights are off, they skits out like really badly. And so that's where one actually did manage to jump out of the side there. So because there's a bit of a change in routine, it might stress them out a little bit. I think I'm going to just make sure I cover those little holes yeah. as well, just because they might get a little bit more aggressive and a little bit more stressed out. Better to be safe than sorry. Yes, and I know it probably sounds like I baby my fish, but honestly, African cichlids are like this. Yeah, like yeah, 100%. yeah. When you're not here, they just get up to chaos. They like toddlers. They can't be on super <laughs> They literally are. Like sometimes I'll be upstairs and I even hear them having a go at each yeah. other. But yeah, I think that that pretty much covers everything. Is there anything you can think of that we haven't covered? Not at this point. I was talking to Kay before as well. We'll see if she can pop my socials down the bottom because I yeah. do have a better explanation of like my Facebook page and the services that we offer on there. So mm -hmm. jump over and have a look at that. Yes, yeah, so it's Gem Aquatics. I'll put it up on the screen. And so you've got Instagram at the moment. Yes. You've got Facebook. <clears throat> Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Yeah. And we are in the process of starting a YouTube channel. We're yes. still trying to figure out the technicalities around that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and we do have some exciting projects working in the background at the moment. So keep an eye out. And you don't just do fish as well. Yes. Like you look after other animals and pets as well. Yeah, so yeah. I do pet setting and tank maintenance. So mm -hmm. if you ever need tank maintenance so not just while you go away but if you wanted a weekly thing or fortnightly or something like that I can also organize that uh, but yeah tank maintenance pet sitting offer a variety of services but jump over to the social media all the details are on mm -hmm. there so following Emily's advice I am doing a big water change on both of my fish tanks right now doing a little bit of multitasking I'm pretty much packed and ready to go so when you're watching this I will be over in America and the first place I'm going to be heading is to Canada to visit Joey Mullen the king of DIY over there which a lot of you will be familiar with his channel 
channel. It is the channel I've been watching for the longest out of all aquarium channels and I never would have dreamt in my life that I would be going and visiting his fish room and meeting him. So that hasn't even really sunk in. That's just incredible. I'm so excited for that. So yeah, I'm looking forward to showing you that. That'll be the first content that you'll be seeing of my trip over there. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like. Let me know what you think in the comments and don't forget to subscribe as well. And you can hit that little bell icon too so you're notified each time I upload a new video and so you don't miss anything. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.